How's it going guys? We are back with another Anthem video and we have a lot to get through today. We have a lot of news including crossplay, cross save and a bunch of other demo related news, quality of life news. But also, we also have this chart that I released on the community section of my channel the other day. Credit to FireDragon04 who created it. There are a few things on this chart that I've been informed are out of date in terms of naming conventions, some of the symbols have changed, but this is a 0.2 work in progress, I am aware there's a 0.3 and when the demo comes out we're going to have a 0.4 and so forth so use this as a guide more than anything else but a lot of work has gone into this so I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the actual reddit thread. Go check it out, leave an upvote, say thanks because a lot of work goes into stuff like this even if it is just a poster. Getting everything into position, getting all the copy in, this, something like this can take a lot of time so a simple thank you goes a long way. Don't forget to check out his channel as well, I'll have that in the description below so just go and show your support to him as well. Right, I'll leave the news section to the end, even though it is quite juicy, I'll dive in with the chart. So, this chart basically lists out all the skills and abilities, primers, detonators and standard abilities with their elemental damages on the form in the chart. It also covers the melee, ultimates and combo effects. So I thought I'd go over and talk about the different elemental skills and quickly just brush over them to give you a broad idea of what each element does and how you can use it going forward for the 25th of January or the 1st of February if you are not pre-ordering. So if you look at Storm, it has a skill called Rhyme Blast. Now I know some of these skills have changed name, but I'm going to stick with what's on the chart for the clarity of just staying on track and not changing things so everyone is on the level playing field. Rhyme Blast is a primer. What this will do is it will prime the target for a combo. However, because it's arc based, what it will do is freeze enemies in place. Not all enemies can be frozen, however. An Ash Titan cannot be frozen. That's not to say that it can't be primed, it can, it just won't be frozen in place, which is what this is supposed to do. Lightning Strike, as well, has a similar effect. It doesn't freeze them technically, but I do believe it's like a stun of some kind. I wasn't there at the Game Changer, so I haven't got hands on gameplay to confirm 100%, but based on the footage that I've been watching, it's a kind of like a stun that freezes them in place for a short duration before they can move again. Arc and Ice primers pretty much function the same way to a certain extent. So the big one that's actually quite different and quite drastically different that you're going to be wanting to use is something like Living Flame for Storm, Firewall Mortar or Explosive Blaze. These are fire based elemental primers and what these will do to the enemy is not only do a lot of raw damage but they will also add a burn effect which will do a damage over time. So this is actually a really really strong primer to go with and something that you should be looking at going ahead. Of course enemies may have elemental weaknesses and it may be strong to fire at which point you won't want to use this and want to go with something else that will actually increase the damage. So the final element that you want to look at is acid. It's weird that Storm doesn't have any acid based abilities however what it does have is the combo effect which I will get to in a minute. Because of that it makes it almost one of the most powerful javelins in the game. So what is so good about the acid element? Well as you can see from the Interceptor, it has Acid Bomb, Corrosive Spray, the Colossus has one with Acid Splitter, and Ranger has Venom Darts. So what's so special about Acid? Well, Acid adds a debuff to the enemy. With that debuff, they take more damage. So when you combo off an Acid, they're already going to be doing more damage. If you prime a target or a boss with Acid, everyone that combos off that attack will do massive amounts of damage, which is pretty awesome. So if you have the Colossus, or the Interceptor applying Corrosive Spray or Acid Splitter respectively, when the Ranger comes along and detonates, it's going to do insane amounts of damage because it's a single target focused attack, which is what the Ranger specializes in and it's going to be extremely useful come end game. So earlier I said that Arc is going to be very special even though it doesn't have it. And that leads me on to the next section, Combo Effects. So Combo Effects is something that will happen after you comboed. Now Storm doesn't have any acid based attacks. However, if we read what its combo effect does, AoE spread spreads the elemental effect to nearby enemies. It means that anyone within the vicinity of the enemy that's been primed, if the storm goes in and does a combo, all of those around it will be primed with acid, meaning everyone else can go in and deal insane amounts of damage for cleaner. Though it doesn't have an acid based primer, it has one thing even better. And its combo effect is pretty much going to be got to and require it in every setup. If you're going up against a lot of mobs, you really do want to take a storm with you 
just for this effect only. I mean, just think about it. You go in with a Colossus. Colossus goes in, uses Acid Splitter, then comes the Storm, uses Flame Orb, detonates. As it detonates, the combo effect comes into place, AoE spread of the Acid Splitter, then you have the Ranger moving in with multi-target missile battery as an additional detonator, but it's the ultimate. And with all the enemies around the boss being primed with acid, having a debuff, taking more damage, boom! Mass amounts of damage. It's just surreal. Additionally, when you're looking at the ultimates, Ranger and Colossus act as detonators. Storm's ability acts as both a primer and the detonator, so you can actually have it at the beginning or the end. I find the Interceptor being a detonator and invincible. So it's pretty cool stuff here. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say when it came to this chart. It's a fantastic guide to get you started for that demo coming along. I definitely recommend you go to the Reddit post, say a thank you, go to the channel and show them some love because a lot of work goes into this. And now with that out of the way, on to some news. So let's get going. Right, so, so let's get started with the news that's been circulating around. Mike Gamble was asked, will Anthem run on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X at 1080 60 frames per second? The response is no, they've prioritised visuals, they can look at prioritising frame rate maybe as a future thing. The next question below was how about 4K 60 frames per second on Xbox One and PS4 Pro? This person has a very very vivid imagination that something like this is remotely possible on the current tech. I mean it's pretty difficult on PC to be fair. Michael Gamble said, I'm not sure of a game that is able to do that. Anthem 100% will not run at 4K at 60 frames per second on console, but it will run on PC if you do have the rig for it. And just to be clear, because it wasn't expressly stated, Chonky Kong and Mersin... Yeah, I'm not going to try. To be clear, Anthem will run at 4K 30 frames, correct, for Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. I second this question, 4K, and Michael Gamble said yes. So... Anthem on both will run at 4K 60 frames. However, we go further into this. It seems people are very interested in the way the visuals will look. Mike Gamble decided to release a tweet which went even further because he was getting a lot of questions regarding the same topic, which I can understand might get a little frustrating. So he said, 4K for Pro and X, 1080p for standard consoles is what we're building to, hopefully to get the matter to rest. But it wasn't enough. He was asked, is native 4K on Xbox One X with dynamic on PS4 Pro? Gamble responded, I think, but I'm not sure. It will be dynamic on both, with the X maintaining native most of the time. PlayStation might use checkerboard, but he'll have to check. And this is most likely going to be the case. The X is more powerful, and simply put, it is ahead of the PS4 Pro. The PS4 Pro does use checkerboard for a lot of things, and in a game like Anthem, it will make sense. But as long as it can maintain the resolution for the most part, it's fine. Next, we move on to cross save and crossplay. Vope asked, thanks for being transparent with all the questions and answers. What are the chances we get global progression? Jump out of my javelin on PC, then back onto it on the Xbox One. Jonathan Warner said, we're working on it. This is a tricky one, but we're definitely working on it. Which shows intent, right? But they go further. Spartan Zero asks, no relation to me, by the way. I'm the original Chaos Prime Zero. Will cross save or cross play be a thing for Anthem? Michael Gamble also said, looking into it. So we can see based on those two responses, they really, really want crossplay to be a thing. They really, really want cross save to be a thing. Because at the end of the day, when you look at a game like Anthem, which is a games live service, the more platforms it can work on, it means it's another revenue stream for them because there's no future DLC that you have to pay for. It's all microtransaction. So if they can open up other avenues for you to play with, why not? Even if they don't have true crossplay, but they can actually introduce cross save, it means I can start on the PS4 and I've got friends that play on the Xbox One, I've got friends that will probably play on the PC. I can continue my save and my progress on those other platforms while playing with those friends. I won't need to start from the beginning. And if they can pull this off, this is going to be amazing. And I really hope that either one or the other, or if not both, can actually be possible. It will be major props to them, and the fact that they are actively trying to get this done gives me hope that one day we will see this in the world of Anthem. Let me know in the comment section what you think. I mean, is this something that you'd be excited about, you're interested in? Would it entice you to get a second copy if you have multiple consoles? Let me know, I'm interested. Because for me, it would definitely make me buy a second copy of the game. Even though it would be the base copy for the Xbox, it would entice me to do it simply because I have friends that play it there. 
and it means that I can actually go there and play without having to restart the game and this is a big thing for me. Right, on to the demo that's going to be arriving on the 25th. So Mike Dara wanted to set expectations. Now I'm not sure how you're all going to feel about this, so I'm just going to go through this and let me know at the end what you guys think. So how's Anthem demo different from the game? We start you in the middle, no tutorials, no pilot picker, balance is super different, economy is completely different, it's got 6 weeks less bug fixes, with only one story arc, I think the mission, stronghold, free play balance will be off a bit, slightly less nuanced PC controls because it is 6 weeks out of date, we've renamed a few things for clarity in the main game which are not present here, because essentially this was a build from December, and because of that, though this isn't a true reflection of the actual game, there are now questions as to why it's being called a demo and not a beta. I think a demo still suits this better, it is a work in progress demo, it's not a beta, a beta is a test bed for the devs to see how the game will handle stress levels, how the servers will cope and everything else like that. A beta is also used to see how abilities are being treated in the game, how people can break it, how unbalanced it is, but where they are right now with Anthem, they're pretty happy with the balance, they're pretty happy with the way it's going, they have a clear focus and they know what they want to do, so everything is pretty much set in stone and is getting tweaked till the very end. So this is actually a demo, so with that out of the way, it is a 6 week old demo from the actual build. And as anyone in the games industry will know, as I can tell you as well, having worked in the games industry as well, I can tell you with certainty 6 weeks is a mountain of time when it comes to bug fixes. Considering when I was working in the industry, I was getting around 2-3 builds a day. Now when you take that, multiply it by 7, that's 14-21 to 21 builds a week, you multiply that by 6 and you're going to you can see where I'm going with this. So it is a very old build, 6 weeks is a lifetime in games development. So do take that with a grain of salt and just and don't make your full judgement based on bugs and stuff you'll find in the game because they will likely not be present when the final release is here. What you want to do with this demo is go out, have fun, enjoy it, get your first hands on and basically see how Anthem is for you. The developers believe that this build is enough to win you over. They are giving you a try before you buy. So, have fun people. Next we move on to some skills and abilities questions. Tash asked, I've noticed the Colossus gameplay that it does not have a shield. Is that a build or does it simply not have one? And if so, how can tank properly? Jonathan Warner said, Colossus always has a shield, but it's not always deployed. So. So the way Colossus will work is that you'll have a set of skills that you can use without the shield and a limited number of skills that you can use with the shield. So the gameplay will change quite a bit depending on which state you're in. But that is exclusive to the Colossus because it can't have everything with the shield out otherwise it will just be broken. Which I'm totally fine with by the way. Michael Benheim asks, Hi Ben, just wondering if there's any kind of aim assist on weapons or melee attacks. Some of my clanmates are curious about melee targeting on the interceptor. Ben Irving said, we are very generous with how we assist you with melee. So expect a lot of aim assist for the interceptor, is basically the answer here. Ricky Vandekar asked, Will there be anything available in Anthem that will allow us to use, on Storm for example, two blast seal abilities instead of one blast and one focus? Ben Irving said, Nope, these are the choices you have to make. Essentially, you're not breaking our game. Go away. But good question. Lucy in the Sky asks, Cool name by the way. Is there an advantage or point to using the non-combo abilities? Fantastic question, absolutely brilliant. Because up until now, everyone's been focused on priming, detonating, priming, detonating, and using the combo effect to their advantage. But what if you don't? And what are the penalties for getting it wrong? Well, Ben Irving goes into this. They do more damage compared to a detonator that doesn't detonate. So if you fail your combo, then raw abilities will do more damage or than one that has non-damage effect, and more raw damage than a primer because they don't provide the prime effect. So a primer does less damage, because it primes a target for the second follow up. A detonator does more damage if it connects as a combo, if it doesn't, it does less damage. Non-prime or detonator abilities will do more raw damage than a primer and a failed detonator, but it won't do more damage than a combo. So though it may seem lucrative to use non-primed abilities, for that first attack, just remember that that first attack that you do to prime is to set up the combo for the mass amounts of damage. Raw abilities will have a set damage. If you're just starting out, I would recommend getting used to the primer and detonator abilities, 
but sometimes this won't be possible. Maybe some things will actually be immune. I don't know, because I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I wish I did, but I don't. But this sounds interesting. It means that you have to think about and learn your enemy as you go along. Really, really good question. From John Whitfield. Can you please explain if alt regen is strictly time-based cooldown or affected by doing regular damage to enemies? It's affected by things you do in combat. We come to our final three tweets. We're coming to the end of the video. You're leaving me. Right. Rookie Iskarot asked, Hey, are there going to be any servers in Asia? You haven't specified anything for the Asian players. And the answer is yes. They'll have dedicated servers around the world. Now obviously this will raise the question, what happens if I'm in the UK and I want to play someone in the US? Can I connect to them? Chances are probably not as they're going to be separate server based. However, there is a however, if I want to play with someone from the US and I have them in my friends list, like I do currently, I can invite them and we can play. Which server we actually land on, I don't know. I'm assuming the host will be the one that hosts the server. So your ping might be a little higher, but it is possible to play with anyone around the world. A nice question here from One Suffer Ninja. Hey guys, I wanted to know if weekly streams would still occur after launch, or if it would maybe slow down a bit. Ben Irving said our goal is to keep them up. And finally, for all of you glamour enthusiasts, you fashionistas, you end game designers, Jay asked, can we customize the thruster color on the suits? Ben Irving said, <laughs> Nope. But we like this as an idea for later, so expect this in a cash shop near you. So, with that said, I've come to the end of the video. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, do leave a like, subscribe, share. 500 subs away from 3000, it's exciting, it's awesome, and I have all of you to thank for. So, once again, Thanks for being here, thanks for supporting the channel, and most importantly, thank you for supporting me, because it means a lot to me, and when I'm up at 2am in the morning, 3am in the morning making these videos, I don't feel bad about it, because I know all of you are going to enjoy it, and that makes it all the worthwhile for me. Right, until the next video, remain legend.